I can pledge to you that I will support any law that will prevent a killer like this. No, but I'm talking about her And I asked him, what's on the agenda for tomorrow? Everybody who's speaking is young. We don't have anybody over the age of what I think is 20. I think it might even be younger than that. Well, because this is our story. This is our generation. Our generation has had to deal with this the whole time. It's our time to talk. You know, you can send your thoughts and prayers. These are our thoughts. You have to listen now. Well, how do you organize something like that? You're 17 years old. You're a high school student. Well, we get them to march for something they believe in. If we can all agree on what we're trying to march for, people are going to come and march. People believe in an assault weapons ban. People believe in universal background checks. These people are marching not because we were able to sway them into marching. They're marching because our lives depend on it. Well, not long after the shooting, you and some of your fellow students who spoke uh, for stricter gun control were labeled crisis actors. People said you were paid by the far left to further an anti-gun agenda. How do you feel about that? When people can't attack your argument because it's too tight, they start attacking you personally. And that's sort of how you know you've won. So when they want to call us crisis actors, that means they looked at our rhetoric and said, oh no, they're right, what do we do? Let's make something up. You are working with progressive groups though, right? Like Indivisible, which is a movement to resist the Trump agenda. You, you have dipped a toe into politics here. Correct. Well, I say we're marching to protect you from other people like you who have guns. And I say that target shooting, while it is a sport, we've become the targets. We are the targets now. We are running away from people like you. So, and, and to those in states with more relaxed gun laws, shooters are going to your states and buying your guns because it's easy, because your gun laws are embarrassing. You, uh, you have a massive social media following. Uh, people are certainly listening to you. How do you make sure that your personal agenda stays your personal agenda? Oh, I don't get influenced by people that aren't me. It's very difficult, and it's a daunting thought, because power so often corrupts, and when you have this kind of platform, a lot of people want it, and a lot of people want to use what we have for their own agenda. Our only way to fix that is to stay on our message, is to say what we're saying and don't let anybody else corrupt us. We listen to all the advice we get. Whenever people say, I was in the civil rights movement, I was in the movement that then ended the war in Vietnam, here's my two cents, we are happy to listen to them. Second, somebody suggests that they take control of anything, we respectfully decline because this only works because it's us. So the leadership of this movement still is teenagers. Yes, and while we have people who help us, while we have people who can help us book hotels and get city permits, those aren't the people controlling our message. Those aren't the people writing our words. The only reason this has worked and the only reason this will continue to work is because we don't let ourselves get bastardized by others. The terrible events at your high school happened just a little over a month ago. How do you feel? Have you been so busy you haven't had the time to... Yeah, it's... It's been really hard to find time to grieve and cope with this, but I think one of the main ways that our group is doing that, and I think the main way that a lot of other people now that have sadly been affected by this are standing up as essentially brothers and sisters in this movement that we've sadly all become part of this family that nobody really wants to be a part of. Um, but now we are, and we have to ensure that nobody, as few people as possible, aren't part of it. There were people who said this week when... There was an incident at a school in Southern Maryland, and the uh, assailant was apparently put down uh, by a guard at the school. There were there were people who said, "Ah, that shows you have armed guards in school schools. People who know what they're doing. We can cut down on school shootings." How do you feel about that? I think it's important to realize that law enforcement does do a very good job, uh, oftentimes, of trying to ensure the safety and security of their people. But oftentimes where they fail is in communities of color and in lower socioeconomic status communities where they discriminate against these people, for instance, even in our schools. When we, when we have more of these law enforcement officers come in, yes, they're going to help secure more students. But do we really want to turn our schools into a place where we have to have police officers and basically create a war zone? Mr. Hart, what do you say to people who, who say, look, these are very admirable young people, but they are young people. And that's not how society works or should work. They ought to see a little of life before we start taking their prescriptions for what we ought to do. To those people, I would say, I think we've seen a little of life considering we saw the slaughter of 17 people at our school. 
having to see these things again and again is more than enough life experience than we've ever wanted to have. I think saying that students don't have a right to speak out against this is disgusting because we've lived through this. Regardless of what your opinions are or where you come from, you need to realize we are the future of America. And if you choose not to stand with us, that's okay, because you'll be on the wrong side of, his, of the history textbooks that we write. But if you choose to stand with us, you will be praised as standing up with the future of America. Because at the end of the day, what our generation is fighting for is that not only for us, not only for the kids that are alive right now, but the future of America. We can and we will outlive our opponents because they are old and they are stuck in their old ways. We will change the face of America with or without our opponents. Do you have time to be a teenager? It depends what you define as something that's really being a teenager. For me, that's being vocal and standing up to authority and kind of being a rebel, but also admiring the fact that there are people that do know more than me, but also those people haven't lived through what I've lived through most of the time. And uh, does money really talk in these instances, do you think? Well, it gets attention. I mean, the power of boycotting is trying to sway public opinion and in this case, move public opinion on an issue like gun rights. The question, though, does that lead to sustained change? I mean, is that going to be enough to convince the U.S. Congress to have meaningful change on gun rights? I sort of doubt that. That's a big boulder to push. Do you think we're entering a new era of people realizing the power of financial boycotts? I think we are. I mean, we have seen this from time to time, but when you have an issue as potent as the Parkland shooting survivors talking about gun rights, that takes on a new sort of power in this whole debate. How long that will last is open to question, but for now they have enormous political influence. So Students across the country walked out of school to protest gun violence in America. And those students aren't going away anytime soon. They're headed to Washington for tomorrow's March for Our Lives, a national student-led demonstration calling for real changes to improve school safety and prevent gun violence in the United States. More than 800 similar marches will be happening worldwide. From the Vietnam War protests to Black Lives Matter, young people have always been at the forefront of America's social movements. But how will American lawmakers and the American public respond to this one this hour on point students from across america lace up their marching boots for me that's being vocal and standing up to authority and kind of being a rebel but also to those people i would say i think we've seen a little of life considering we saw the slaughter of 17 people oh i don't get influenced by people that aren't me it's very difficult and it's a daunting thought because power so often corrupts and when you have this kind of platform a lot of people want and a lot of people want to use what we have for their own agenda our only way to fix that is to stay on our message, is to say what we're saying and don't let anybody else corrupt us. Students across the country walked out of school to protest gun violence in America. Enough is enough! Enough is enough! Enough is enough! And those students aren't going away anytime soon. They're headed to Washington for tomorrow's March for Our Lives, a national student-led demonstration calling for real changes to improve school safety and prevent gun violence in the United States. More than 800 similar marches will be happening worldwide. From the Vietnam War protests to Black Lives Matter, young people have always been at the forefront of America's social movements. But how will American lawmakers and the American public respond to this one this hour on point, students from across America lace up their marching boots.